guess what? I arrived. I'm in Paris. I just got off the coach. And um, let's head to Airbnb. I just need to find out where the metro is and find out how to buy tickets. It's so quiet in the morning. All right, let's, uh, I just checked the map. I have to go through this park. Since we're talking in the morning in the park, let's talk about last night. Um, the coach was all right. I slept for a little bit, just not continuously. So you will sleep for like, I don't know, half an hour, you'll wake up. Then you change your position and fall back to sleep for another half an hour. But overall, it was okay. They signed me to sit in a seat with another person. So I was like, this is not very comfortable. But if you check the, the coach, there are a lot of empty, empty seats on the back. So I moved to the very end of it. Then I just slept there. I just walked out of uh, Back to Bessy. It's gonna take us like about five minutes to get to the metro station. I kind of have to talk like this with my mask off because it's so early in the morning. If I put my mask on, it just fogs up uh, my glasses. I can absolutely see nothing. I made it. I just got my Navigo. Now let's go to Saint Denis. Let me ask you this, can you guys hear the drilling? No, it just stopped. But there was drilling <laughs> next door. Good morning. A quick update. I just arrived at Airbnb. This neighborhood is called Saint-Denis. And apparently, um, well, it, I think still, it is a somewhat poor neighborhood. But in general, I think it's, um, I think it's a charming place. Before I continue, I realized I look like a mess because I slept on the coach last night. I'm gonna go quickly wash up, um, cut my hair, brush my teeth, paint my face, then uh, we'll continue from there. All right, I'm back. There's nothing a quick face painting session wouldn't fix. Okay, so where was I? Um, you know, the drilling you just heard, I think I should go back to the beginning. So I just arrived. I was having a conversation with the host, a great person, by the way, and we, I was telling him how I appreciated that um, the neighborhood seems really organized, very clean, very safe for me to walk around. Literally two minutes later, two minutes later, the police was knocking on the door and he, he was like, um, I'm sorry to say this, but we're going to make some noise because we are going to break into your next door neighbor's house. We were like, what's going on? And um, the police said, apparently, because there's an old gentleman living next door and he was hospitalized for a while, um, because he was sick. So during his hospitalization, somebody broke into his house and stayed there and never left. So yes, he has quarters, which is terrible. Um, but I think the police found out and they're going to break into his house and force them to leave. But don't you think it's ironic? Literally two minutes after the conversation to appreciate how safe and nice the neighborhood is, then this happened. So uh, welcome to Saint-Denis. But to, to be fair, this can happen to any neighborhood in Paris or not just Paris, anywhere in the world. Okay, I took a small break. I charged my phone, still not full. So we're gonna do that. <laughs> we're gonna continue that on the way. I'm dressed. Jennifer just recommended, that's my friend by the way, I'm, who's, who I'm gonna see tonight. How exciting. She recommended me to go to this thing called the Louis Vuitton Foundation, which is like an art museum. So they have a, um, temporary um, modern art exhibition. I'm gonna go check that out. I tried to book tickets online to make a reservation, but everything is full for today. But I called them hoping there will be cancellation. He said, no, it doesn't work that way. But if you come to the venue, there will probably be tickets reserved for guests just visiting. So I was like, are you sure? He was like, I'm pretty sure. So, but he could be wrong. We'll find out. <laughs> Um, but before that, I'm gonna go get some breakfast. I'm really hungry. So the plan will be food, then the art museum, maybe walk around a little bit. Then at half past six, I'm gonna go meet Jennifer and pick her, off, pick her up after she gets off work. And uh, we'll probably do something together. It's gonna be so much fun. I'm so excited. I haven't seen her for so long. 
Somebody had fun last night. The first disappointment of the day. Manoa is closed. But there's probably something else I can find. Let's go. Okay, I saw this place called Sihi Dinyak. It's a bakery with a lot of nicely made pastries. Uh, never been here, so I'm gonna get some treats. Okay, so this is what I got. I've got a equinox, not just this, and baba or pan. Alright, how do I do this? This looks so good. I think I'll start with this. It's a signature dish. Can you see? It's sweet, it's creamy, it's hazelnutty. It has many layers. It's just one of the best things <laughs> I ever had. And the girl over them, she's so nice. She explained everything to me. She's very patient. I wish you were here to see this. I can taste a bit of alcohol in it. It's fruity. Yeah, I prefer this to be a bit more acidic. But still, it's really good. Earlier, when I ordered, she was like, oh, is, is it, um, do you want to put in a nice box? Is, it, is this a present? I was like, no, really. I just want to eat it by myself. <laughs> I think I like the Equinox better. It's not that sweet, it has a really good balance. You know, I keep forgetting how, how sugary Baba or Han is. <laughs> they literally just dip them in sugar water. It was good on the first bite. Afterwards, it's just too much. Now, Google Map asked me to take a bus. How do we do this? I never done this before. I, I don't know if they take a Navigo card. Alright, looks like they do. lady walked towards me she was like how do i send my location to my friend she was like oh you're, you're young enough you probably know this thing <laughs> like that can be many things right so like to uh, on which app but eventually she figured it out by herself she wants to do, do that on whatsapp um but isn't that interesting where uh, you're walking in the in the park and just being be approached by random people asking you to help them with technology. <laughs> yeah, it's right over there. See that silver thing? That's the foundation. Okay, this is it. We arrived. Let's see if they have tickets. I was clearly blind. The sign says, if you want to buy a ticket, you stand here. I was asking around people, like, where do I stand? Okay, I got in. They even gave me the student prize. <laughs> That's very nice of them. The outside building of the uh, Louis Vuitton foundation looks crazy. It's designed by the same person who designed uh, uh, the Guggenheim, also the dancing house in, in Prague. So that's his style. Some more models of how this was made. And so basically, these two Russian people, they collect arts and um, it, it's private, right? So um, after they die, the things finally, slowly, gradually become more public. Um, there are a lot of reasons that they haven't been public um, much quicker, but you know, finally, more people get to see it. You see, this is another model of the building. So after you enter the first part where they give you a brief history of the Russian brothers, Mikhail and Ivan Malazov, you'll see a sculpture called the Wave. 
Mikhail and Ivan's first cousin commissioned from this person called Anna Gorkina. She was the first woman admitted to the Moscow School of Painting, Sculpture and Architecture, and she's also an assistant to Auguste Rodin. So the first room was filled with portraits of the models of families, their artist friends, also industrial friends, etc. Like this is Mikhail Malazov, and judging by the year this was painted, he was soon to be dead after this. This is Mikhail's wife, Margarita. After he died at something ridiculous like, I don't know, 33 years old, she donated the collection to the Tetyakov Gallery. And one thing about this room, they said all these people are connected to the Malazov brothers. Wouldn't it be better if they marked down the relationship between the person in the painting and the brothers? Because this is the interesting part, isn't it? This is their great aunt, I think. Uh, you see what I mean? If they wrote that down on top of marking the painter of the painting and the name of the person they painted, it would be much clearer. Just a suggestion. Uh, this is the painter friend Konstantin Kar Karavin. Uh, it's painted by this person called Valentin Sirov who's supposed to be famous, I don't know. This is one of their business friends, I think. Ooh, is this Ivan Maradov's wife? Please give me some of your hair. This is Mikai and Margarita's son, Mika. Oh, remember I showed you that uh, the sculpture of the wave and that their cousin commissioned it? This is the cousin. And I want to show you the crowd level for today. Not too bad. This is so cute. He looks like Dupont and Dupont from Tantan. It's the first piece of Monet to enter Russia, by the way. Yep, Edouard Monet. Look at this iridescent dress. You simply must introduce me to your seamstress. Renoir really is something. Such great colors. And then another example of how Renoir used colors. I love his style, great stuff. This Picasso is quite chill, I like it. Most importantly, it does not make me want to kill myself. So this next room was a group of black and white photographs. They're mostly taken from the painting gallery of Ivan Malazov's mansion in Moscow. Can you imagine having this many paintings in your house? It says that after Mikhail died, his brother Ivan took over his brother's project and kept collecting French modern art, like the Impressionist stuff. It also says that in winter 1918, there was an order issued to nationalize Ivan's collection. I don't know much about Soviet or Russian history, but that sounds devastating. I would have been so sad if other people are taking away my beautiful toys. <laughs> but anyway, I think um, Ivan made the right decision to flee the country and he ended up in Finland. And sadly, he died a few years later at the age of 49. Thinking about these makes me very sad. Can you imagine having to leave your home and all the nice things and good memories behind and not knowing if you will ever see them again? This somehow it reminds me of my friend Jane. She had to leave her house when Hurricane hit her town that one year. I don't remember if it's Katrina or not, I think it is. She, what she did is she left the things that were valuable to her on the bed. So if the house was not flooded too badly, they will still survive. Some of the details might not be correct, but that's the same level of sadness to me. Okay, I think I found my favorite room. These paintings are huge, and these three are actually connected. It's a garden facing the ocean, I think. And uh, this is autumn. Let me get closer. I absolutely love this. And it pairs with spring, which is on the opposite side. And he I can't believe Ivan kept some of these in the staircase. I would love to have these in my staircase. This is spring, by the way. Well, I have to have a staircase. Actually, I have to have a house that has a staircase. <laughs> and by the way, do you guys remember where they are kept? I'll show you the clips right now. And here they are. That shows how huge the mansion is. Okay, you thought you saw everything. Then you turn the corner and you see a bunch of more things. These are so colorful. I love these. And this. And this. And this. Wow. Uh, these are by Pierre Bonnard. Here I found some Monet.
That is nice. You know, um, Monet gives me a vibe that fairies can fly out of his painting. Unless you're a Scottish fairy and all you want to do is kill people. Oh, this is so cute. He has a, another piece of pomme. I love his style. Look at this. So cute. And a little ghost licking a piece of candy. Oh, this is so good. Seriously, I can't stop looking at it. Who made this? I don't know this person. Now I entered this room that's full of Gauguin. I think Mikai collected quite a bunch of his work. Nice. Oh, I found a cat. Zitch dog. Zitch dog. I'm not playing your stupid game. Oh my God, what happened in this? What a tiki room nightmare. And I just realized, look at this, for example, this is called Tarari Maruru. And all these are Tahitian themed that explained the non-white people and the animals. And look at these goats. Go, go, there are goats living in Tahiti. Well, not everyone gets to be sent to Tahiti. It's a magical place. Not everyone gets sent to Tahiti. It's a magical place. I have to say, the Marazov brothers have very good taste. Look at this color, so lively, so playful. I love this tree. Mm, mm, mm. This Albert Marquet person, he paints like a child. I love it. This is awesome. It will look so good in my bathroom. And this will also look very good in my bathroom. This is just crazy, but I like it. I think I just fell in love with this painting. Look at how cute it is. Oh, I want this in my living room so bad. Who painted this? André de Rhin? Well, I don't know you, dude, but I like what you're doing here. Ah, quick, everyone below 15, close your eyes. From far away, I thought this is a hedgehog, and I was like, oh, this is cute, but turned out it's just landscape. Who made this? Oh, hey, it's you again. Okay, here's a Van Gogh painting that you have to wait five minutes for. This is it, the prisonnier. Okay, so the story was Van Gogh was uh, institutionalized, and his um, brother Theo would send him black and white pictures, and he would paint those pictures um, as paintings, but in colors that uh, he imagined in his head. He's, they call him like in, interpretation in color. Okay, there you go. This is the painting. I have to say they have some very skillful lighting in this room. Uh, made it look like it's illuminated from the back. But all I can think about right now is Hugh Jackman singing in Les Mis. Okay. That Van Gogh was painted almost a hundred years before I was born and uh, he died a few months after that. Oh, this is very cool, I like this. But it must be controversial when it's painted. When was that? 1910. Well, imagine the Russian scholars at the time seeing this. They probably have fumes coming out of their ears. And you see on the back, <laughs> Oh, they have portraits. But they have vases. How interesting. Very nice. Also, you'll notice there's a book on the piano called Cezanne. It's another famous artist. Okay, so this is the last room. And it is filled with sculptures. And of course, they let all the nudes at the end. I suppose that's very strategic. Alright, that's the end of the exhibition. I love every single thing in it. It's such a great collection. I haven't even showed you this flying fish signature light in the cafe. So not just the exhibition, the whole building itself is amazing. Highly recommend. 
Now let's go to see Jennifer. I made it. I'm in front of Jennifer's office and uh, she'll be here in like five minutes. It's been, I don't know how long, many years since I've seen her last time. We'll see. I hear something. Can I be her? <gasps>好久不见了<笑> 北海道的什么东西这个是鸭胸<笑> Alright, as you can see, I'm home already <laughs> Sorry, it ended kind of abruptly Because the last minute I was having dinner with Jennifer and um, now I'm home Actually a lot happened, we talked a lot Most of it's kind of private, so <laughs> I didn't record anything Dinner was really good, you know the salmon dish um, I showed you a little bit, you can't really see the salmon, it's on the bottom, the round dome kind of thing. Um, on the top is a soft boiled egg. And it's so delicious, so good. The main dish I had is um, the duck breast, it's very traditional, but it cooked perfectly well. I really liked it. Even in the bottle of sparkling water, <laughs> Jennifer was like, oh, this tastes different from the normal sparkling water. Um, it, it, some somewhat different it's not that bubbly so you know sometimes you buy sparkling water and when you take a sip it's almost like you know the gas is going up from the back of your brain it's not like that it's um it's very mild and um has a hint of sweetness in it so great restaurant and towards the end it, it became so busy we started we started eating at 7 p.m by the time we leave, people are queuing up outside and they they literally they kicked us out. <laughs> they were like, sorry, we have reservations, so you, you need to leave. <laughs> so we moved on to a coffee shop and uh, continued talking. So we talked literally for hours and hours and I only got home like half past 12. It's already the next day. <laughs> Tomorrow, I'm going to see my friend Megan and Doma. It's been a while since I see them as well. So this trip is... Lots of reuniting with friends. It's been a great day. I hope tomorrow is going to be just as fun as today. I'm sure it will be. So I'll end here and um, thank you for watching. I love you and I can't wait to see you again.